Hello everyone. In this video, we will understand about the well-ordering principle and also uh, the proof of it. Further, we will also see some problems related to well-ordering principle. First, the principle, every non-empty subset capital S of the positive integers has a least element. Let us prove this particular principle using mathematical induction. Let us consider the statement as P of n, every non-empty subset capital S of the positive integers has a least element, where n is the number of elements in the set. Suppose if n is 1, then P of 1 will be having a single positive integer and let that particular set be P of 1 equal to uh, within the set, you have only one element, let us call that as R1. In this case, the least element exists and it is that element itself. This element itself will be the least. Hence, we can conclude that P of n is true for n equal to 1. Now, let us consider n equal to 2, which means the set will have two positive integers. Let us say those positive integers are R1 and R2. Now, if we compare these two in that set, and then we can able to identify which is the least among these two, and that means that the least element still exists. Even if the elements are same also, that will be the least element only. Uh, I mean, whatever is the element, that will be the least element. Hence, we can conclude that P of n is true for n equal to 2 also. Now, let us assume that P of n is true for n equal to k, which means uh, it will have k elements where k is a positive integer. So, let us consider that set as P of k equal to R1, R2 and so on up to Rk. In between, we also put an element called Ri, means the set P of k has k elements in it. And let us assume that the least element exists in this set and that it let it be Ri, this Ri. Now, to prove that P of n is true for n equal to k plus 1, means the set will have k plus 1 elements. So, we will call it as R1, R2 and so on up to Rk and then one more element Rk plus 1. We already know that in the P of K, Ri is the least, we assumed it. That means in this set, either this Ri will be the least or the newly added element, which is Rk plus 1, that will be least. Means we can compare this Ri and Rk plus 1 and find out whichever is the least. That means least element is still existing in this set also, that is P of K plus 1 also. Therefore, we can conclude in general P of N is true for uh, n equal to k plus 1 or we can conclude that p of n is true. So that will be the proof of this uh, well-ordering principle. In this question, we need to find the smallest element in the following subset of natural numbers. Uh, that is, the set is defined as n element of natural numbers such that n is equal to m square minus 10m plus 28 for some integer m. So, we are supposed to find the least value of n, what n can take, uh, such that this m value also should be an integer. So, we know the least n value or the least natural number, the least natural number is 1 and hence let n equal to 1 to start with. That means we will equate 1 equal to m square minus 10m plus 28, which means we will have a quadratic equation m square minus 10m. And if I bring that 1 to the right hand side, it will become negative, which means you will get 27 and that is equated to 0. If we try to solve this quadratic equation, uh, we will have m value I mean, here, if you solve this, solving this quadratic equation will give m value, which will not be an element of integer because the condition given for m is it should be some integer. So let us move on to the next n. Let n equal to 2 then what will happen is 2 will be equated to m square minus 10m plus 28, 
which means our quadratic equation now will become m square minus 10m plus 26 equal to 0. Again, uh, here solving this quadratic equation will give m values which will not be an element of an integer because uh, we will not be able to factorize in such a way that we get the values of m as integers. So let us further increase the n value. Let n equal to 3. Then it, it will become 3 equal to m square minus 10m plus 28, which means m square minus 10m plus 25 equal to 0. Now we can able to factorize this. We can rewrite this as m square and 10m will be split as minus 5m minus 5m plus 25 equal to 0. In the first two terms, common element is m. So m minus 5 we will get. Next two terms, minus 5 will be common. So I can write it as m minus 5 this one. So in these two terms now, m minus 5 is common. So m minus 5 times m minus 5 will be equal to 0, which means we will get m minus 5, the square equal to 0, which means our m value is 5, which is an element of z. So it satisfies the condition what is being specified in the above set. Therefore, the least n is equal to 3. That is the solution for this particular problem. This question says, find the smallest element in the following subset of capital N, that is natural numbers, where the set is defined as N element of natural numbers such that N is equal to 5Q plus 3 for some integer Q. So now, again, we will consider the least natural number. Least natural number is 1. Uh, hence, we will consider first n as 1 and that is equated to 5q plus 3, which means uh, we will have minus 2 equal to 5q or q equal to minus 2 by 5 and that is not an element of an integer. So, let us increase now n. If n equal to 2, then what will happen? We will equate 2 equal to 5q plus 3, which means 2 minus 3 will become 5q or minus 1 equal to 5q, which means our q value is minus 1 by 5, which is again not an element of integers. Further increasing n value, if n equal to 3, then what? We will equate 3 equal to 5q plus 3. Both sides 3 can be cancelled. So we will get 0 equal to 5q, which means q equal to 0 by 5, which is 0. And that is an element of integer. Therefore, we can conclude, therefore, least n value is 3. That is the solution for this particular problem. In this question, we need to find the smallest element in the following subset of natural numbers. Uh, it is given as small n element of capital N such that n is equal to minus 150 minus 17 d for some integer d. So we know this, uh, since it is small n is a natural number, we can very well say this n has to be either greater than or equal to 1, which means we can say now minus 150 minus 17 D should be greater than or equal to 1. That means we can rewrite this as minus 17 times D should be greater than or equal to. If I bring that negative 150 to the right hand side, it will become positive 150. That means 1 plus 150 or we can say minus 17 D should be greater than or equal to uh, 151. Now, if this has to be, this left hand side has to be larger, then D value should be definitely negative. Uh, uh, if it is positive, then this can never be greater than or equal to 150. 
and we will start i mean straight away it is visible that i can think about substituting uh, d as negative 10 if i put d as negative 10 then we will have minus 17 times minus 10 greater than or equal to 151 which is true because 170 in the right hand side left hand side is definitely larger than or equal to 151 in order to check whether any uh, number which is greater than negative 10 whether it suits or not let d equal to minus 9 we will substitute it will become now minus 17 into minus 9 greater than or equal to 151 is it so 9 7 63 6 it becomes 153 greater than or equal to 151 so 9 7 63 yeah so we get uh, uh, this number also a valid uh, this thing means this is also true this is also true this is also true now let us check for d equal to minus 8 so what do we get minus 17 minus 8 uh, is it greater than or equal to 151 let us check that uh, this will become positive 7 8 or 56 5 136 no this is not valid so that means the best d value will be minus 9 hence i can say n will be equal to small n will be equal to minus 150 minus of 17 times minus 9 that will be the result in the sense minus 150 plus 153 we get 3 therefore we can say least element of least element will be 3 that will be the result of this particular problem this question we need to find the smallest element in the following subsets of uh, natural numbers where small n element of natural number such that n is equal to 4s plus 90 for some integers s and t. Now, uh, this both s and t should be some integers. So, first we need to find out, uh, first of all, uh, least natural number, least natural number, we know it is 1. So, if n is equal to 1 then we can equate 1 equal to 4s plus 90. What is that we need to do? We need to identify some s and t values with both should be integers and the result should give me 1. So let us consider s as some number. For example, if I put s as 0 then our t value will be 1 by 9. If I put t as 0 then our s value will be 1 by 4. Now, let us consider some other number, uh, some other integer. I mean, we consider s as integer, but t is not uh, an integer. This is also not an integer. So, it is uh, not valid. Now, let us consider uh, s as negative 1. If I put s as negative 1, then what will happen? If s is equal to minus 1 then we have 1 is equal to uh, 4 into minus 1 which is minus 4 plus 90 that means we get 1 plus 4 equal to 90 which means uh, t will be 5 by 9 so this is also not a valid uh, integer so i'll have to put a cross to that let us increase s yes. sorry decrease s yes. if i put s as minus 2 then what will happen then 1 is equal to 4 into minus 2, which is minus 8, plus 9t. That means uh, we can say 1 plus 8 equal to 90, which means t is positive 1. This is giving me a valid answer, means s is negative 2 and t is 1. So that means we can say if s equal to minus 2 and t equal to, I'm sorry, here I should have written 1. t equal to 1. Uh, sorry. t equal to 1. We get uh, 1 which is our n value. Will give us uh, 4 times negative 2. Plus 9 times 1. We get this value. Therefore we can conclude that. Hence the least element. of 
n will be 1 only. That will be the result of this particular problem. 